All right, welcome to my garage. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I figured why not do something out here? Uh, people at Watt Cycle uh, contacted me and offered me one of their 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries to try. Um, no strings attached, said here, give it a shot. See, tell us what you think about it. I thought I would do that again on video. Uh, I'm not gonna show an unboxing of it because obviously it's already unboxed. Uh, but I will show you the box. It came very nicely packaged. Uh, double layer cardboard, foam insert in a bag um, on my doorstep, safe and secure. This is again, a hundred amp hour, 100 amp hour uh, lithium phosphate, 12 volts. It weighs 23 pounds. Uh, I have in my basement a lead acid, sealed lead acid, uh, UPS battery. It weighs uh, 108 pounds uh, of comparable capacity. Um, they came with a very nice uh, instruction book, uh, charging voltages, various wiring configurations. Uh, they do uh, suggest that you can put uh, this in four series and also four parallel for up to uh, 16 16, um, 16 jars, that's a lot of capacity. Uh, I, I did not, again, want to show unboxing it because I wanted to give it the best chance at capacity. I've had it uh, connected to my 10 amp power supply at 14 and a half volts, charging and balancing for the last three or four days. Um, it would, it initially charged up and then would take current uh, every few seconds, it would take a little pulse of current as the uh, balance circuitry was working to level out all four cells inside there. So now that I'm pretty sure it is completely top balanced and ready to go, I have connected it to uh, an inverter here. I have a 500 watt heater. Um, I'm not going to stress this battery. I'm not going to destroy it. I'm not going to open it up. Uh, I'm not going to try to overload it. I'm going to use it as you would a battery and evaluate its performance. So um, the 500 watt heater should be about a 0.5 C discharge rate on this. And uh, I'm expecting it to run for about two hours. I have a watt meter connected to the inverter. So we will get the uh, kilowatt hour delivery from it. And we'll, we'll see what we get. I'm not gonna record this whole thing. We're just gonna start it and watch it settle in. And then uh, I'll come back and report, uh, report how it did. We went up over 700 watts there at first. Now the heater is settling down, 460, 450. Okay, I'm also going to go get my amp clamp and see what we're getting on the DC side. Um, yeah, I'll cut this off and we'll come back when it's done and I'll tell you how to do it. Okay, we're at uh, 1.1 kilowatt hours out of uh, 1.28 rated. Uh, we're drawing uh, 44 amps. It started at, at 40 amps when the voltage was higher. Uh, 11.6 volts and falling fast, so that's it. Uh, that's just below three volts per cell. Um, we're getting close. All right, and we're back. Uh, the inverter started screaming a uh, low voltage alarm and it cut off at uh, 11 volts even. Uh, so the battery still had a little bit of discharge left in it to go, but we got uh, 1,121 actual watt hours out of it delivered to the heater uh, with a little bit of capacity left to go. Um, that's pretty good. 1121 out of uh, 1280 rated. Um, I'll take it. That's a good battery. That's a uh, good discharge. I'm going to connect this back up to my uh, universal battery charger power supply 
and uh, it's gonna take it's gonna take all night to charge at 10 a.m. So that's 10 hours, and uh, we'll try and do something else tomorrow. Okay, today is tomorrow. Uh, I had the Watt Cycle 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cell uh, on my power supply charger for uh, all night. I uh, cut it off this morning. It was not quite fully charged. I stopped the charge at 13.75 uh, volts because I had the next idea in mind. I have uh, powering my basement stuff. Uh, aside from the Blue Eddy devices, I have an APC UPS that runs my uh, internet router, my uh, network storage server, and uh, some other things. So that allows me to, to, to play with the Blue Eddy stuff, but not crash all my devices. So this is an APC Smart UPS uh, 620VA 390 watt UPS that I have at some point in the past uh, hacked and uh, modified to run on an external battery. Uh, I have it downstairs running on a uh, similar size uh, AGM lead acid battery and I have observed that it will float that battery at 13.9 uh, to 14 volts uh, depending on the meter that I use to, to measure it. So I charged this thing up to very nearly that and brought my UPS up and connected it to the watt cycle battery. And we're going to see, uh, I know this is going to work, but it, it should work beautifully. Um, it is still currently slowly charging. It's charging at 0.9 amps. Uh, this only has a two amp charger. Uh, this UPS is also not actively cooled. These are designed for short run times. Um, I, in my normal use, only have uh, 50 to 100 watts of load on this. So even in an extended, in an extended outage, uh, the the cooling vents on the side, the metal construction, it does it does cool itself. It doesn't it doesn't overheat. Uh, I, I on purpose don't drive it very hard. Uh, but I have, uh, again, the UPS connected to that. I've got my uh, power voltmeter there. I've got an ammeter here. Uh, everything's plugged in. I do not have the UPS turned on. So it, it is connected to the wall. I will press the button to power it on. I have plugged in down here off to the side a 50-watt uh, LED light. just as a bit of a dummy load. So it has completed its self-test and it is now online. Notice even when it was turned off, it was charging. So anytime these UPSs are connected to a wall, uh, whether it's switched on or off, it, it will try to charge its attached battery. So let me scoot that over so we can watch. Uh, so negative uh, 0.64 amps, that's power going into the battery. Let me disconnect it from the wall and my light stayed on 2.9 amps coming out of it voltage is slowly falling my led light is still lighting so can it work as a ups battery i believe it can work very well the uh 13.9 to 14 volt uh, float voltage of this UPS should correspond to a average cell, uh, cell voltage in the battery of uh, 345 to 3.50 volts, which is a good voltage for them. It is not on the high side. It is within the specification where the balance circuitry on this will work. Uh, the book that came with it says the balance circuit starts at about 14.1 overall voltage. Uh, so it puts it in, uh, that float voltage puts this into the range where the balancing circuits are active. We'll keep it nice and balanced out for you. It's a good um, three and a half volts per cell is full, but not too full to stress them. Uh, I think uh, a battery like this could live a long life serving a UPS like this. Uh, also of side note, 
Let me plug this back in so it stops beeping. Of side note, this uh, UPS takes a standard 12 volt, 11 amp hour uh, lead acid gel cell. And there, there are smaller lithium phosphate batteries that will fit in the housing of this, but they typically have a very, very small uh, BMS. They're rated for um, 10 amps, 12 amps, 15 amp discharge. These, uh, these UPSs, these little desktop UPS systems, are known for uh, beating the, the bejesus out of the internal battery. So at its 390 watt uh, discharge rating, this thing is pulling uh, 35 amps uh, out of that little battery. Um, they're not very kind to it. So a, a, a little lithium phosphate in here with that small uh, discharge rated BMS would not support any meaningful loads. It would probably support my, my low, you know, 100 watt loads, but it would not support the full capacity of this UPS. Um, so I'm going to try another test. Uh, let me clear off stuff and we'll come back in a bit. All right, we are back again. Uh, I'm gonna try to see how long the watt cycle 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate will run a 12 volt compressorized cooler. This is a nice travel cooler we got several years ago. Um, traditionally on, on trips or extended deals, I would take uh, one of my lead acids and plug it in when we weren't using uh, running the car. Uh, this is a very nice alternative, much, much easier to carry around. So I'm going to do what, uh, you know, what the normal person would do. I've got a warm cooler. I've got uh, some cold food. So I have uh, beverages, of course. And I've got a 16-pound ham. Those are both cold. So we are loading up our cooler at home, getting ready to hit the road. I have uh, the cooler plug plugged into a 12-volt uh, socket adapter, and we will connect that to the battery. I heard the cooler beep. All right, it shows 71 degrees Fahrenheit, 14.5 volts on the battery. I did fully charge it before uh, starting again. I uh, charged it to the full 14.6 that they specify in the book, uh, which is uh, 3.65 per cell. So that is full, full, full for lithium iron phosphate. So I'm expecting uh, the cooler will start up in about 30 to 60 seconds. It's got a uh, power on, timeout, short cycling feature. I'm expecting all this to run for several days. So that's, uh, that's what we're after. Um, I will come back when it's done and report what we get for runtime. All right, the cooler started up. Let me just show a little view of the screen there. 13 volts from the battery. Uh, it's on EcoCool, which is the most, uh, or, sorry, least power using. Uh, I have it set at uh, 35 degrees. And the L at the bottom there, or at the right, is uh, it will run the battery as low as it possibly can, which is fine for the lithium iron phosphate. Check back in a bit when this is done. And we're back, uh, 130 hours later. Um, I left for work this morning. It was uh, 119 hours on the, on the clock. Cooler was running fine. Uh, I came home 12 hours later and it has run off so i'm gonna guess it's uh, 120 hours maybe of runtime 125 128 it could be anywhere in there but the the thing is uh, even at 120 hours that's five straight days of continuous running of a uh, portable cooler from 100 amp hour lithium phosphate battery the, the cooler gave up first, It, I, despite being set at its minimum uh, battery protection voltage settings, uh, it quit. I'm still, I still have 10.2 uh, volts on the terminals of the watt cycle battery. 
Uh, I also, after starting the test, switched out to a, uh, I removed the clip leads and switched out to something with a circuit breaker on it. Uh, I just feel more comfortable leaving that, un leaving that unattended for a period of time. But uh, yeah, the battery is, is well and truly flat. 10.2 volts is empty for lithium phosphate. However, it's still above its uh, you know minimum protection settings. Uh, per the manual, I think that is 9.5 volts where the BMS will cut off discharge. So now we have an empty battery and uh, we need to charge it up. I previously showed that with my uh, 10 amp power supply. I want to try something else. I've heard uh, all sorts of things about charging lithium phosphate batteries with regular lead acid automotive chargers and it either being a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, so what I have here is a up to 35 amp uh, car charger. Uh, this is advertised as being three stage and all that. So there is uh, the possibility that when it, it, it might try to do an equalize or equalization uh, stage and trip trip out the uh, the BMS with high voltage on here. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, so I'm going to remove everything here and connect the charger and uh, come back when it's done and tell you what I found out. Okay, welcome back to the garage again. Uh, the uh, watt cycle, 100 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery charged just fine with my uh, lead acid automotive style charger. I had it set at 35 amps, it's uh, maximum output for quite a while. Uh, decided to turn it down uh, part way in. It was, uh, the, the battery clamps were getting a little bit hot. It's not uh, designed for these uh, screw type terminals. It's made to grab a hold of a lead acid, a lead post. So I turned it down, it uh, completed its charge, it brought this thing up to 14.25 uh, volts, which is uh, just fine as far as I'm concerned. That is full for lithium iron phosphate, or almost full, it's not 3.65 volts per cell, but it's close, it's 99% full. And uh, it is, uh, most importantly to me, uh, above the advertised, um, balance voltage for this. It says that in the in the instruction book, it says it'll start balancing at 14.1. So we were just above that and I'm very happy with that. I can't say that I will use that for routine charging, but uh, it's a good option if I wanna put some amps into it quickly, um, more fast, more quickly than my 10 amp uh, power supply can. Uh, so I've done a couple tests on this thing. Uh, we ran it uh, with an inverter at 40, amps to 45 amps or close to four, uh, 47 was the most I saw as it ended its discharge. Uh, that is a uh, 0.4 C. That is a good, healthy discharge rate. I think it is capable of hundred amp hours. I ran it on my uh, portable cooler. It ran that for five days continuously. Uh, one advantage that you have running a 12 volt cooler off of a battery like this is that uh, there is no parasitic loss. I would normally run that cooler off of one of my Blue Eddy devices and uh, they run a much higher internal pack voltage. So they have some DC regulation to bring that down to 13.8 uh, output volts to, to run your device. So that's always a, it's a constant 5, 10, 15 watts of uh, consumption that happens. And running that cooler directly off of 12 volts, there is no parasitic loss other than the electronics of the cooler themselves. Uh, being on to monitor temperature, start the compressor, all that sort of thing. So uh, if you want to run your 12 volt fridge for as long as possible on a given uh, amount of amp hours or watt hours available, uh, running it directly off of 12 volts is uh, a native 12 volt battery such as this is, is the way to go for uh, efficiency. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a good battery. I quite, quite like it. Um, Thanks for watching.